Well, so maybe mine's not quality, but no, no, no. <laughs> we post no, no. every day. But that's the difference. Because I think you need us because you can, you can, you know, <coughs> your stuff is all good. I'm not saying well, that your stuff is bad. I don't. We just have a whole different philosophy, and it's not because of the third floor or wherever. It's because our web people told us if you don't have several new things a day, people are not going to come back. Yeah, it's the right. same thing, and we want people to come back. And so tell your people that they were easy to find you. People come they back. know that. I mean, that's probably the hardest thing in the world. That's the hardest for all of us. Um, so we, you know, we don't have a set number like ten a day, five a day. But we know that we have to have several new things a day. The couple days right after the election, we were just so burned out, and it was really a lot less. But now we're back up to a decent amount every day. We have new stuff every day. And, you know, right after the election, a couple of our regular readers told us, um, you know, you guys don't have, you know, they said it, we're not going to come back. We, you know, I didn't even look today because you hadn't had anything. So, I mean, we really, really, you know, but I, but I obviously, I have coworkers. I mean, we make a point of having stuff every day. The other big thing for us is we try really hard to have stuff first. I mean, it pains me to, to say, to see stuff elsewhere that we didn't have first. I mean, there are times where we're not going to have it because, A, we don't think it's worth covering for whatever reason. We don't know it's true or whatever. Or we didn't get it because one of the campaigns gave it to someone else, and there's nothing we can do about that. But for, for basic news, we really, really try to have it first. I mean, and that's what, you know, I'm not saying that we are always like that, but a good portion of the time we do have it. Oh, Eileen and then Sean. Just a question as far as um, just some of the, uh, the content that you could be developing on. Um, I mean, I know that a lot you're doing a lot of reporting. Um, you know, I work on Sierra Club, so I have an active interest in, in things like the Surrey Coal Plant and offshore drilling and the fly ash in this particular area. But and those are things that your newspapers are reporting on. Um, but the, you know, you're all also very people who are trying to encourage voters, and voters aren't necessarily making the connections between how important these issues are and with the candidates and where the candidates are on, on those issues. So you're doing a great job on the reporting level, but it's not getting reflected back into the, the, um, the political mix on you guys' website. So. Well, I think, I mean, since you brought up the fly ash, I mean, you know, Scott Harper, who's our environmental reporter, I mean, you know, on the cave, a lot of that reporting. I mean, again, it, it, I think it goes back to your point about the, the education secretary. Sometimes there's just, because of the way that the reorganizations have occurred, and I think in all of our places, you know, there's just the way that, that coverage responsibilities are parceled out creates, confusion isn't the word, but just yeah. creates some kind of impediment to, because let's be honest, I mean, we're all in competition up here, as Anita said, we all like to get stuff first, but we also have kind of organizational or institutional pressures, and some of that is as simple as, you know, this is that person's job, and I don't want to step on their toes because that's going to lead to frayed feelings and things of that sort. And so, you know, there's there's office politics everywhere, um, you know, even in newspapers. And so that's that's part of it. I mean, I think that we, you know, uh, not so much with, with 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 the Surrey plant, but I mean, certainly with things like cap and trade. I mean, that that was an issue in, in the campaign. And so there was some overlap in the coverage with with environmental issues. I mean, I know that. You know, I blogged at least a couple times about you know some of the back and forth on cap and trade, um, but yeah, I mean again, it's you know there are just there are a number of kind of boundaries that exist, even if they're they're somewhat blurred. Um, that I think you know subconsciously, at least in my case, kind of factor into the decisions about the way you know what I do and don't put on the blog. And I, this is going to sound crass, but it's the reality that we live in. Uh, anytime I wrote an in-depth policy-laden story about something, nothing would move. But Sheila Johnson stuttering. <laughs> but, 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 but you know what? But, but part of the problem also is, and, and, I, and I, I actually do hold you all responsible for this. This is where I'm getting get on my high horse. Because you all turn around and link the Sheila Johnson story over and over again, but when somebody takes the time on one of the blogs right. to write a policy story, you don't a link to the blog and b even have it on your blog roll. So it's so it's a combination of things that you all are helping to feed the beast by the by the choices that you make. Because I mean, Eileen like writes a lot of stuff over on Article Nine, is it? Article Eleven, and. 
I rarely see anybody ever linked to anything that's over there. Well, I, I mean, I, just for, for me, I mean, I know some of the people in this room, but not everybody. I mean, I'll, I'll give out business cards. I mean, feel free to feel free to feel free to send us stuff. I mean, I've definitely linked that. to you. I've linked to to you, Jr. Um, you know, I've linked to, to some of the blogs. Um, you know, but the reality is, again, I mean, it's a function of perhaps how limited our our blog is. You know, we don't have, unlike Ryan and Anita and Kimball, we don't even have a list of blog yeah. roles. Um, you know, do I think that we should? Absolutely. Do I make those decisions? No, I don't. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think we should. I think you guys have an important voice. Uh, I, you know, those of you whose, whose blogs I'm aware of, I, I read on a regular basis. But that, I mean, that's a huge, it's a huge battle right now in journalism, is this, you know, what responsibility do we have to raise the brow, raise the level of discussion? And I mean, but you watch you know, MSNBC and Fox News Channel, all of these things, they rarely get into these in-depth policy discussions. It's always about the horse race. It's always about, you know, which campaign landed the hardest blow and which candidate fumbled on the campaign trail. I mean, and that's what moves viewers and that's what moves readers. Uh, it's not necessarily the most ideal situation, but the Sheila Johnson stuttering story, you know, that just brought, I mean, I think that the YouTube clip had mm -hmm. over 100,000 views. But, but that's also, but that's also not unique to, to politics. I, I, mean, no, I, covered, I covered the city of Hampton for a year, and, and they had a $400 million budget, and more people came out for the feral cats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And we did and three days on the feral cat stories. Go to the, 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 the yeah. Daily Press site, and there's community cats. I mean, you can't get the shad plank on the front of the site, but there's community cats. So community cats? That's where you get people to upload their pictures of kittens. Yeah. I mean, the reality is that's what we're competing. 